Hi guys, it's Lawrence again. I wanted to create a quick video tonight to describe how I went about designing the outside shape of this sign, which at first seems quite simple, but once you get into it a little bit, you discover that the shape has, uh, there's a little bit more to it than it first meets the eye. So a little background first, uh, the sign is a gift for a friend, and uh, he owns a metal working shop, and uh, helped me uh, make some holdfasts, and uh, long story short, I wanted to make him a gift. Uh, he creates uh, tools, including jewelry presses and, and other types of presses, and there's a badge that is on each one of these tools, and I wanted to go ahead and create a sign for his wall shaped like those badges. So, because I wanted to be a surprise, I went ahead and just went to his website, and I downloaded a picture of one of his presses, in this case a 50-ton jewelry press, and I found the bad shape on it. I captured that in paint, I believe. And obviously I couldn't use this directly into the designer because it's not a high enough resolution. But it was a high enough resolution that I could use it just to sort of see the shape and the size and the ratios of the letters. So you can see the potter is sort of curved and the U and the A are curved inward, but the S is straight up and down in a, in a larger shape size, obviously. But the thing that was really interesting to me about this was this outside shape. I didn't recognize it and I didn't know what it's called. So I googled curved triangle and actually came up with the real name for what this is called. It's called a rouleau triangle and it's a shape that's created when you uh, overlay three circles at an equal distance from each other. And in fact uh, the shape itself has a curve of consistent width which is very difficult to wrap, at least for me to wrap my head around uh, the geometry, but because of this uh, uh, attribute, uh, it can do some fairly neat things. For example, if you have a rotating arbor, you can take a rouleau triangle and you can spin it, and this, this example, a drill bit will do this, one that's shaped like this, and it will create a nearly square hole, which I found to be fairly interesting. Uh, if you've ever played with, I don't know if you remember the old Spirograph game back when we were kids, uh, I know there was one of these that was shaped this way. And it's just the geometry that goes into it that makes this shape uh, interesting. And on top of that, it's also a fairly commonly used uh, shape throughout uh, architecture and art. And uh, it's used in gears at times. And there's all kinds of different things you can do with this shape. So what at first seemed like a fairly simple shape ended up uh, being a, a, a very uh, well thought out shape for his tools. So I discovered that and I, I found it to be kind of kind of neat. So at any rate, that was the shape of the sign. Now what I did was I went online and I tried to find the largest rouleau triangle image I could find. I looked for DXFs, I looked for bitmaps that would be nice and clean, I looked for anything else I could find, and I was not able to find uh, any perfectly clear uh, rouleau triangles. The largest one and cleanest one I could find was this one, and this was my first go at the sign. And when I'd finished it up, I hadn't yet tilted the U and the A, and I was doing my up-close look at the uh, pattern itself. I noticed that it was very jagged around the edges. Now, I wasn't very happy with this, so I took it in and I took this pattern into the pattern editor and then uh, and fiddled with it a little bit and tried to smooth it out. And I wasn't able to get it to the the quality that I really was expecting, and I wasn't very happy. So, in frustration, I walked away from the Carverite software and, and went into CorelDRAW and I tried to use that image in CorelDRAW to create a clean rouleau triangle and then import it into the designer software. And once again I ran into some sort of roadblocks and I wasn't able to get things done as cleanly or as easily as I wanted to. So after some choice words that would probably make Captain Bruce blush, I walked away and took some you know, time to think about things and I decided I was going to go ahead and give the actual designer software a shot and see if that could work. And yet once again, uh, this is just the proof that if you take the time to think about uh, the software itself, you can really get nice clean results 
designing your projects in the designer software. So here's the actual final result that I came up with. Uh, a couple things about it. If you look at the one that I'd imported, the Rouleau Triangle, which is a bit more of a true Rouleau, it's actually a little bit pointier at the corners than the badge was. So I wasn't real thrilled with that. My final result that I came up with is much closer to the actual badge shape, and I was quite happy. And now I'm just going to go into real quick how to go about creating this shape in the designer software. So go ahead and open up a new file, and in this case it's 14 inches by 14 inches. And when you've got your board laid out, the next thing you want to do is open up the Snap to Grid box. I set my grids at half an inch just because it's what I'm familiar with most of the time. You want to click on Snap Objects to Grid, View Grid, and Center Grid, and then click OK. And that just lays uh, a set of grids over top of your board. So now what we do next is create three circles and of equal size, and then we're going to lay them out. So you can create one circle anywhere. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to go ahead and give it a radius of two inches in this case. Now, you've got one circle, you need two more of the same size. You can go ahead and create new circles the same way, or you can just copy and paste to get a second circle. Or, if you want to use shortcuts on your keyboard, it's Control-C, Control-V, and that will give you uh, a copy-paste of any item. So now we've got our three circles of the same size. And now if you want to go back and, and remember what we're talking about, here's the center point. We want to set these three circles up at equal distances from that center point. So the first one on the center line, we're going to go ahead and go two and a half inches or five spaces up from the center line. For the second one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go five spaces over and five spaces down. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for the third one. And now we have three circles that are equal distances from that center point, equal numbers of, of, uh, of blocks in any case. So you can click on one of the circles and then hold down the control button and click on the other ones. Or you can do the same thing over here on the left-hand side. And this will go ahead and let you grab all three circles. Now obviously we don't have a ruler triangle in the middle yet. That's only because the circles are too small to create that shape. Uh, we kept them small because that way they were easier to lay out on the board. But now we're laid out so we can go ahead and make our circles bigger. So we started out with a two inch radius. If we jump into four, now we see that we've now created that Rouleau triangle shape in the center. And in fact, this Rouleau triangle shape is uh, quite interesting in that it's closer to the true Rouleau shape that I imported with the pointy corners on it. But it's not quite what we want. What we want are the rounder corners. So to do that, we just continue to make our radius larger. And the larger you get with it, the greater the shape and the rounder the corners. So uh, the greater the angle on the arc, I should say. So on the, the radius, the one that I ended up finding to be the right angle for me was a 9-inch radius. It both fit the screen and fit the shape at the same time. So I was lucky in that case. So now we've got a Rouleau triangle, which is great, but unfortunately we also have all these segments connected to the circles. and We need to find a way to get rid of this. Now there's probably other ways to do this, but the way that I discovered to do it, and I found it to be well the only way I could think of really, was to use the arc tool. So before we go into the arc tool, the first thing we're going to do is go into layout and go back into snap and unclick snap objects to grid and click OK. And the reason for that is we're going to be laying these arcs out right on these intersections. And you'll notice that this intersection and the other ones, as a matter of fact, don't actually lay on the grids. So we don't want that snap objects to grid to uh, interfere with where we lay out these arc lines. So again, we're going to lay out our first arc. We want to go use your middle mouse button and zoom in so you can get a nice good clear look at that intersection. You're going to left click and drag and what I'm doing here is I'm just using the uh, middle mouse button to navigate around the workpiece while I'm still holding down the left mouse button. Now again there may be other ways to do this, it's just the way I find to be 
most natural. So you find that intersection and you let go of the middle mouse button and that creates our first line for our arc. You can then left click in that green dot to create the shape of the arc. Now don't click off this yet because we actually want this arc to be selected because we're going to use it to build off of to finish the rest of our Rulo triangle. So now we just take our cursor, move it over the red dot until we get the hash, hold down your left mouse button, and then the same way we did for the first one, we zoom right in, and once you get right over top of the intersection, let go. Then left mouse click, create your arc that you want, and you've got the second part of your Rulo triangle. So do the same thing for the third one. And we now have our Rulo triangle underneath or on top of these circle shapes. So now we can click and then control click uh, to highlight and select all the circles. You can right click and delete and we're left with nothing but our Rulo triangle shape. Now once we click on that one thing you'll notice, and this seems to always happen, is you'll notice that this segment's just fine. It's a closed segment. It's a, uh, a solid red dot. This one's a closed segment. But when you come to the last one that you do, it seems to always be that it's left as an open segment. So you have to left click and drag off of it, and then drag on to it again. And when you do that, it closes that segment. So now we have a complete shape that can you can do. Uh, you can use the cut tool on, uh, cut path tool. You can do everything that you normally do to any shape. And in fact, in this case, we want to go ahead and flip it vertically to give it the shape that we want to fit our badge that we use to create our sign. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I hope it was informative if not uh, entertaining, which, you know, uh, and just want to tip my hat to Bud one more time and, and just say, thanks, Bud. You were really the inspiration for me doing any of these at all. Uh, if everyone out there learns even a small segment of what we've all learned and continue to learn from you, uh, then I'll feel like I've been a success with this video. Uh, if anyone has any better ways of doing these things, please let me know. I'm learning more and more every day. Uh, this is just my attempt and my method for uh, taking care of this one, and I sure appreciate the input. Again, thanks, guys. I uh, hope you have a great time, and happy carving. Bye.